necessarily a Christmas gift, but I got to show our friends the coolest coffee mug I think I've ever seen. A gift from you and Shelly. And I really appreciate it. And I guess it's fitting to me because people are saying, Sam, you like coffee so much, you should just walk around with the pot anyway. But it's actually a mug. You know, if you, it's a little bit smaller, if you could see it, than the actual coffee you can bottle. You see my hand next to it, so it's really not that big. Right. That's a perspective. But it's apropos for you, Sam. Everyone says, Very man, much. that fits you. The guy who should be walking around with the whole pot. He loves his coffee. And it keeps it nice and hot, too. Yeah, so I really awesome. like it. But uh, it is Christmas, um, so we are uh, gearing up to celebrate the Christmas season. Um, we're in the book of Hebrews. Yes. And uh, just to catch the people up a little bit, um, you did a sermon on, uh, well, Hebrews 1, 4 to 14. That was about the deity of Jesus Christ. Yes, Boy, if you ever want a chapter on Jesus being God, I mean, that and John 1 yeah. have got to be... Um, Two of the two of the best, and the main purpose for that passage was that God was, the writer of Hebrews was showing how Christ is superior to angels, and uh, that angels, uh, what, that he is he as the Messiah and Son of God is superior to angels, and kind of that context is continuing on into chapter two. There, there is the this concept of the angels, uh, and the fact that he is still establishing that Christ is superior to you. In fact. This week's sermon was on verses 5 uh, through uh, 18, and he starts off and says, For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. And then he begins to take up to give an ex explanation of why Christ is superior to angels, but it also is a giving an explanation of why Christ came to this earth or why God, God became man. And this has given us a reason uh, it's actually given us a purpose and a reason for his mission and ministry to the earth and what that was. And the word that's repeated quite a few times in this text is the word subjugated or subjected. And this is for sure, if I may for a moment, huge reputation to those that say Jesus was an angel. Oh, yeah. Like the Jehovah Witnesses. That's right. This that's right. blows that out of the park. And what this is explaining is why Jesus became a man. And it even talks about man, how God made us a little lower than the angels, but it says a little lower than the angels for a little while. We're going to be exalted and honored through the resurrection of Christ. God has a purpose for us in, a, in his right. church. So this is going to be a great passage, but it also talks about why Christ came to the earth. And it's going to talk about why he came to bring salvation for us. So basically... The big idea that I'm trying to get across today, Jesus' mission and his incarnation was to come to this earth in order to bring dominion and redemption to his fallen creation. Man lost dominion on the earth. The first Adam lost dominion on the earth by his sin and, and basically yielding to Satan, an angel, an angelic creature. He lost dominion to an angel. And that's why Jesus is referred to in, a couple times in the New Testament as the last Adam or the second Adam. He's going to do the right thing this time by being a man as a second Adam. Do what the first man didn't do. Do what the first man failed to do. And he's going to win back dominion from Satan and from sin and death. And he's going to win back redemption for us. And that's what the whole that's what Christmas and is all about. And that's why believers are in the second Adam, not the first Adam. That's right. Um, so. Amen. So we're, we're looking forward to that. And by the way, just to remind, the last week we talked, uh, we, we were dealing with verses 1 through 4 of Hebrews and we called the name of that sermon, I called it Burn the Ships, Guarding Against the Drifts. And it's a, that was the first warning passage in Hebrews. There's going to be five warning passages. And that was a warning to the believers that they need to pay very, very close attention, lest they drift away. And remember, the book of Hebrews is written to, we think, Jewish believers in a small church, maybe in Rome, outside Rome, but there's people that are sitting on the fence. They haven't made their decision to either accept or reject Christ. And they're kind of checking it out. But they haven't committed. And because of persecution from the Roman pagans and also from the Jewish unbelievers. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. And so the writer is presenting Jesus as superior. He's the fulfillment of all the scriptures. And you need to accept him and make a choice. Solidify and start, you know, make a firm commitment and trust Christ and get off that fence. So he's warning them. His warning passage, don't go back, don't go back. Adhere and accept Christ. And that's what this passage is about. And then another cool thing about this Hebrews 2 is 
you know, while we looked at the deity, it's also emphasizing his humanity yes. and how he's able to empathize exactly. with us. I mean, just That's listen key. to this. It says that for since he himself was tested, for since he himself was tested and has suffered, he is able to help those who are tested. So it really emphasizes his humanity and his likeness to us and why he can be our high priest because he's both God and fully man. Amen. So this is, That's this it. is some Powerful good stuff. stuff. So, as always, you are invited on Sunday, yep. Christmas Eve service, Pastor Tom. When's hey, that? That's going to be that's December be 24th, right? That's going to be 24th here at 5 o'clock. We have a wonderful PM. time of music. Candlelight service. Candlelight service. We'll have a little time with the kids, have a little fun time with kids. And uh, I do this thing with uh, Seeking Jesus. We do. Uh, we sing the song, We Three Kings from Orient, or, and, I, and I have oh, yeah, them yeah, seek, yeah. And that, uh, seek the gift. Right, and uh, then we're going. I'm also. Uh, you're going to be sharing with the word. We're going to do something a little different. He's going to share the word intermittently through a. Ch I'm going to do a chalk drawing this su Sunday, Christmas Eve. I'm going to do a chalk drawing, and we're going to intermit it with with music and the word in between. But I'm going to be pe uh, drawing in the background, so it should be interesting. It's going to be a fun time. Plus a candlelight. We'll end it with a candlelight service. So it'll be fun. Come on be a great out. time to meet some of you that have been thinking about coming. That's right. Come to come this Sunday, next Sunday, Christmas Eve. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Pastor Tom, thank you. Thank you all for listening. And we will see you next minute. And we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.